Cartier Jada not coming back to K-State. That made official this afternoon. Bruce Weber has a quote on that. It was first reported by Jeff Goodman, National College basketball reporter. So the question here is, what's the legacy of Cartier Jada? It feels complicated. It feels messy after last year. But the answer is really pretty clear. What's the legacy of Cartier Jada at K-State? It's this. Or if you prefer, the legacy is this. Here's the inbounds. KU's got it. Ball out front. Stolen by Jada. He will take it down and stuff it. He stuffs it. Wow, he's got eight. Kansas State leads 69-61. The legacy is not purely the windmill dunk against Kansas. The most lit moment, as the kids would say, in Bramlage Coliseum history. It doesn't have to be just that play. It's what that play was emblematic of what that play represented what that play represented is what Cartier Jada was throughout that two-year run which is the best that we've seen in consecutive seasons from K-State basketball in my lifetime an Elite Eight and a Big 12 championship and Cartier Jada was the fun unbelievably fun role player off the bench on those teams Cardi was the guy that saved the ball inbounds at Baylor Threw it three quarters of the way down the court to a streaking Barry Brown for a dunk in a huge road win over Baylor that helped set up a Big 12 championship. Cardi, yes, had the windmill dunk against Kansas. Cardi shot over 40% from three his first couple of years at K State. Knocked down shooter, hit some huge shots. Cardi was very fun. I've used this analogy before, but the way you should remember Cardi is your fun uncle. The fun uncle for the first couple of years, his career at K State. He would come over on the weekend. He'd take you bowling. You guys would go to the movies. You'd do all the cool, fun things with him. And that's how you remember him. His last year got the shot at being the parent, where it was more his show. He and Xavier Sneed. Those memories are not going to be what we remember. It wasn't good. K-State wins just four Big 12 games. The season was a dud. There's no doubt about that. But that's not what you'll remember 10 years from now about Cartier Jada. What you will remember is all of the times you guys went to the movies a.k.a. all of the times that he dunked on Kansas, dunked on your arch rival, and helped K-State to the highest of highs that this program has had since I've been alive. Yeah, I said it you know, a couple of weeks, months ago, whenever it was that we were having the initial stages of this conversation, and I don't see any way, you know, 10 years, 20 years from now, people remember Cartier Jada and say, man, that 2020 season, do you know how bad things were? It was this, it was that. No, what you're going to say about Cartier Jada 20 years from now is 2019 K-State won the Big 12, and the thing that spurred that on and kind of made you feel like it was possible was Cartier Jada's windmill dunk against KU. And I think that that's really the only memory that I'll have about Cartier Jada in this time because he was a role player. Well, it's it's pretty simple. We remember the great teams. You remember the great teams, and you remember the moments that they created. What have we been spending some of the show today talking about? The 10-year anniversary of K-State's win over Xavier in the NCAA tournament. Like, that's how you remember Jacob Pullen. You remember that season, that team. You don't remember when they started 2-5 and five his senior year in Big 12 play. Obviously, I know Cartier Jada is not in Jacob Pullen's category, and he's not in Darren Sproles' category either, but how often do you think about Darren Sproles' senior year at K-State? Darren Sproles in 2004 was a Heisman candidate, and that team was the first in a decade to not make a bowl game at K-State. They won four games. It was a terrible season. But you don't remember that. You remember the highs. You remember where you were as a fan. You remember, like I do, where I was sitting next to Mitch Fortner on press row, losing my bleeping mind when Cartier Jada threw down the windmill to put the icing on the cake and the exclamation point on Kansas. That's how Cardi should be remembered. You are being prisoner of the moment right now if you're saying, I'm just going to remember the guy that yelled at Bruce Weber on the sideline, which there was somebody in my Twitter mentions that said that. Most of you have not been that guy, but you are absolutely, like the Levitard show has that, he's that guy. You are that guy if that's how you're saying you're going to remember Cardi. I don't want to be the negative jabroni in this conversation. I'm going to disagree with you guys just slightly because I think he's going to be remembered for both, the positives Mm. and the negatives. He had phenomenal highlights in his sophomore season. But this last season, 
He was a part of the team that had the most losses in school history. He missed a windmill dunk wide open against Texas Tech, and then the Red Raiders just went down the floor and hit a three, which we all said after the show after, is that not the season in a nutshell? He was kind of the one of the faces of this past season. So he's been a part of the highs, and he's been a part of the lows. So he's going to be remembered for both. Yes, but how often do you remember the bad teams? We don't sit around and talk about the 14-15 Marcus Foster team that much anymore. Like, And that was only five years ago. We don't talk about the teams that are terrible. We talk about the teams that were great. And that's what Cardi was when those teams were great. We're not going to talk about this past year 10 years from now. I certainly don't think so, but we will talk about the Elite Eight team and the Big 12 championship team, and that's how Cardi will be frozen in time and therefore remembered. The other thing, Mitch, too, is that Cardi has that highlight, man. I mean, I think it's the best moment in Bramlage history. And that highlight is going to be playing still 10 years from now on every intro video. You come into Bramlage Coliseum to watch a game, it's going to be that last of the Mohicans music. And it's going to be Cardi throwing down a windmill dunk. So that's how even people now, like kids that will be in school 10 years from now that don't, they didn't watch K-State basketball the past few years, they're going to know who Cardi Ejata is because he's going to be up on that big jumbotron in the middle of everything. The part that I'll give credence to here, Mitch, is that the point you make is what Cardi is missing out on, right? So what Cardi is missing out on is not being remembered as one of the all-time greats. And that's not the point that I'm trying to make. Barry Brown is remembered as one of the all-time greats because when it became his team and his opportunity to be the guy, he was the guy and won a Big 12 championship and also went to the Elite Eight. Cardi did not step into that kind of a role. He did not step into that sort of a player. And to your point, this year was so bad, that's what he's missing out on. But that's still not going to be the lasting takeaway. The takeaway won't be, well, Cardi Ejata, man, what a guy that missed an opportunity. No, the takeaway later on when we're talking legacy, which is why I go to 10 years, because we're talking about way down the road. What do people remember when you're long gone from this place? That's not going to be the conversation. There will be more players that have come and gone since then and a lot more mundane storylines that will gloss over. That's not what's going to stick out. You will remember the dunk. You will remember the highlights. You will remember the fun that we had with Cardi.